Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's January 5th, 2023. I'm Jim Hutchinson, and this is your weekly video fishing forecast for the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. Now, it is the time of year, of course, for migration. Those big striped bass that we had all along the Jersey Shore throughout the month of November, they're pretty much the most of them, the big ones, are off of the Cape Charles area, western side of Delmarva in the Chesapeake Bay. And of course, migrations, all of our fluke, they're out getting chased around by draggers out in the Hudson Canyon. Of course, some of our shops are on the move as well. To start the year, Frank and crew here at Gabriel Tackle in Brick, New Digs, same road, Manaloking Road, is just a few steps away from where they were located the last bunch of years. It's at 567 Manaloking Road in Brick in the Lenape Plaza. So come over and check it out because they've got everything set up. They'll continue to set up for the next several weeks. But first and foremost, the Gabriel Tackle crew is grabbing just about everything in the shop and heading south. Yep, still migrating. They're gonna be down at the Wildwood Fishing and Boating Expo this Saturday and Sunday, January 7th and 8th. The Fisherman Magazine will be there as well. John DeBone is gonna be there both days. I'm hoping to sneak down there for a little bit of time on Saturday. That's at the Wildwoods Convention Center right there on the beach in Wildwood. Also there as well, the Saltwater Underground's Nick Honacheski, our surf field editor at the Fisherman Magazine. He's got his booth there and understand a bunch of seminars as well. So make sure you stop by the Fisherman booth, the table, get your new or renewing subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. We've got the BKK hooks. You'll also get a package of fish bites as well. You can get all the details at fishingexpowildwood.com or of course turn to the January edition of the Fisherman Magazine for this and all the other shows going on throughout the month of January. Like the New Jersey Beach Buggy Association's flea market, for example, that's this Saturday, January 7th from nine to two at Tom's River High School South, that's there on Higher Street in Tom's River. Admission is just $4 for that NJBBA event. However, if you wanna get in on the deals early, maybe there's some collectibles or some hot items, there's a special early bird admission uh, that I believe is $8, and that gets you in there to the event starting at 8 a.m. You can find out more details at njbba.org. Now, I stand here and look at the Great selection of super strikes and the X-Raps and the green heads and the right swimming plugs and I think stripers. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm not hearing too much in terms of surf stripers along the Jersey Shore. Made a few dozen phone calls on Monday to generate our calls for thefisherman.com. The folks that are getting out there think small, the small plugs, the small plastics, um, the, uh, you know, the, the various metals, the Avas and teasers. Guys are working and putting in their time. Some of them are getting a couple of fish. It's nothing gangbusters, but I'll tell you what, it sure beats on a nice day, spending some time on the beach as opposed to starting to tear down the holiday decorations. So if you still got your Christmas lights on, enjoy the weekend ahead and try to get a couple of stripers. They're there. Now I did hear from Captain Mikey Green, Lucky Stripes out of LBI. He heads out of Barnegat Inlet. That was on Saturday. He said, quote, the spring run has already started. He got into 29 and 34 inch stripers on Friday, just two miles off the beaches of LBI. He said the stripers look like they were in slow motion as they're boiling on these bunker that are off of there. So there's still plenty of peanut bunker green, he said. He said those stripers were there. They were just really slow, but they did have some good action. So if they're, if those fish, that I mentioned, those big jumbos aren't down in Cape Charles or off the Delmarva Peninsula. If those fish are still off of LBI, I would imagine they might still be there throughout this winter, who knows. The folks at South Jersey Marina in Cape May County, Cape May actually let me know that the gone fishing sport fishing was still on the bite through this past holiday weekend. Uh, they're off of Hereford this past week. The crew there said they're gonna be running for as long as the fish hang around. That's quite the challenge if these stripers hang around through the month of January, who knows? But you can get in touch with the folks at South Jersey Marina if you wanna get in on that or go find the Gone Fishing Sport Fishing Charters folks over there on Facebook. Also, out of Lewis Harbor Marina down in Delaware, 
We learned, too, that Stephen and Jerry had a pair of keepers before the new year aboard Captain Bo's on Undaunted as well. Uh, so uh, we were just talking about it before, a few of us here in Gabriel Tackle. What the heck happened to folks down in Delaware getting those striped bass? Well, I think there's two specific points, right? Uh, the run started or really materialized a little bit late with the warmer water temperature. So any stripers that are coming in uh, within range inside a three mile line off of Delaware at this point, so many boats are hauled out for the winter. The other thing I really do think is the presence of bunker. Um, and I think those fish are staying out where the bait is, and that is closer to the two three mile line and beyond. Another one of the final stripers of 2022 that I saw was Clifton's Al DiMartino Jr. Had his final striped bass of the year on December 30th while fishing the Hackensack River, and a good fish it was. I want you to remember that west of the coal regs here at the Jersey Shore, um, you cannot target striped bass in January and February. West of the coal regs is basically Delaware Bay, Raritan Bay. Uh, west of the inlets, you can look at some of your nautical charts, maybe go to Garmin or your Navionics to find out exactly where, but essentially all the back bays and salty rivers in the Garden State are off limits. Not just harvesting striped bass, but from targeting striped bass as well. There's a New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting today, Thursday, January 5th, 5 p.m. at the Galloway Township branch uh, of, the, uh, of the public library there in Atlanta County. Is that, that's at 306 Jimmy Leeds Road uh, in Galloway. Uh, not much planned for this uh, particular New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting, but I'm expecting uh, another one of Jason Snellbaker's enforcement reports, and I'm anxious to see uh, how much pressure the enforcement officers are gonna be putting on folks who are throwing four and six inch plastics and plugs in search of white perch. I'm already finding out, so you've been told, you'll be told again, they are making some busts down in Tom's River for folks who are trying to target striped bass in the Tom's River during this closed season. So if you're throwing plastics, it's perch, you're not gonna find any luck. But I tell you what, the perch action is starting to heat up. I spoke with Dennis at Hook House Bait and Tackle in Tom's River earlier this week. He said the night bite in the Tom's River, bloodworms, has been best for guys looking for some white perch. Captain Dave at Absecan Bay, a little farther south. He said this week that milder temperatures had Rob English out on his kayak somewhere in the Absecan area. Maybe it was the Mullica, Absecan Creek, who knows? But there were plenty of white perch back there. Rob put together a nice little stringer. Now you can take a perch or two in many of the local canals or lagoons. You can head up some of the rivers. Um, but you might want to try a shad dart occasionally on an active retrieve you'll get them but even more advisable putting a nice killy live killy if you can get them uh, or grass shrimp on a shad dart under a bobber just let it sit out there so it's a nice way if you're you've got your uh, houses right there on a lagoon or canal it's always worth a shot get out there on one of those nice days of course and as I mentioned those juicy blood worms are always primo baits for getting out for some of those white perch on those salty rivers. Another favorite as we enter the month of January, of course, is blackfish or totog. I find it to be one of the most challenging yet rewarding fish that we have in our local waters. Pretty darn tasty as well. Uh, there's been some good tog registered in these first few days of January, a little hot and cold bite depending on where you go. Some boats are finding the tog action a little bit farther offshore. Not a lot of boats running at this point, but there are a number of them sailing to wrecks in search of these white chins out of Shark River. Manasquan, I believe the Mary M in Barnegat Light, Captain Sam is still running some tog trips. And of course, you've got the Osprey out of Atlantic City. It is getting a little bit quieter at the Jersey Shore, and I do find that more central and north Jersey is where you have a lot more of that business activity. I spoke to Captain Spinelli of the Skylarker. He's also running some trips on the Ocean Explorer. He ran a few trips between uh, Christmas and New Year's, had tog up to 8.7 pounds. Also out of Belmar, Captain Peyton aboard the Mohawk. He climbed down from the wheelhouse to take a better look at this jumbo tog. That boy has some long arms, man. But Captain Peyton will definitely put you on the meat if you're looking to get out and score and on some of those tog this week. An interesting catch aboard the Last Lady, also there in Shark River over in Neptune. Captain Ralph said in between a pick of tog earlier this week while they were pulling up on one of the drops, they caught, a, caught an old schooner anchor. Uh, took some pictures and released it back to the ocean. I know, wouldn't you love to get one of these 
as these anchors from the 1800s on board put it outside. Well, Captain Ralph told me he tried that one time a bunch of years ago and it disintegrated fast. Apparently, if you pull up an old schooner anchor like this, it needs some prep work to be able to display it properly out on your lawn. Again, like I said, the center of headboat activity for you in the Garden State is still, let's say, the Manasquan Shark River area. Um, pick up the January edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Go to the report section for a full sailing schedule. All the boats have those sailing schedules listed. You can see who's, who's running for what and from where. The weather does, in fact, look pretty good in the weekend ahead for hitting those lumps, bumps, reefs, and wrecks. That's on Saturday and Sunday. But all the boats that we talked to earlier this week were railed on Monday. That first day after January 1st, a lot of folks had the holiday uh, on Monday, so I would expect to find some busy activity on those head boats this weekend as well. If you're looking for blackfish, maybe going offshore for cod, porgies, or even weak fish. Take a look at that. The Big Jamaica is running offshore trips out of Brielle every weekend in January. And yes, enough weak fish in the mix that they're actually including that in some of their trip promotions. So head offshore for cod and weak fish. How about that? I actually slipped out Monday afternoon at some of my favorite holes on the upper Manasquan looking for some of those holdover trout. January 2nd, 60 degrees. Who would have known I would have brought home a deer tick in January? That's one of the things that I love fishing in the winter for trout is that I can go up and do some trailblazing and not worry about them. Water levels were a little bit low, so it is, uh, was a little bit difficult, but maybe in the next couple of days. Dante Castagliola found a few small uh, fall stocking leftovers when he worked on the Manasquan that same day, including this 15-inch rainbow trout. So you can, get, uh, you can get some of those trout on the power baits. Uh, you can try some of the salmon eggs if you want to cheat. Go with some of the worms, of course, the MEP swimmers, and the trout magnets, equally effective as well. For more on the freshwater scene, let's check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the weather is going absolutely crazy. We went from that Arctic blast. Now we're in our second week of warm up, and that's making things really tough for uh, ice fishing guides like Josh Taylor, who's looking for great ice to get out and jig up some crappie. He's having to try all over and especially up north to even find some fishable ice, but hopefully that will return really soon. But that didn't stop Jeremy uh, Frederick uh, from getting out and getting in this nice largemouth. Uh, he was out up on Mud Pond uh, getting into a few, and also also his daughter, uh, young, his oldest daughter, uh, young Fawn Fratrick, was out getting into the action, getting into some of those pickerel as well. Always a fun time for those young ones. Now, of course, um, you know, there's folks out there looking for that open water, uh, and this is Quinton Wiggle, and he was out getting some trout in New Jersey, and he was finding some open water there, and actually this was his first trout, and he got it on some power bait, so it's a great start, and I think we'll have the trout fisherman for life there with a 17 and a half inch trophy so great work there Quentin finally if you guys are looking for some open water on the Delaware there's some great fish in there Eric Fistler was out on the Delaware and he's using a slip bobber and out getting some great walleye uh, he caught several of them landed a few uh, and I'll tell you what guys this time of year if you can get out and uh, you know have a boat to get out there are some really good fishing on the Delaware especially for those walleye maybe even a muskie or two if you can get the right spot so guys don't let this uh, this cold weather and warm weather stop you from getting out it's a great time of year lots of fish to be had but right now you guys get out and get on them from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy hey we have a new jersey update out of costa rica this week perhaps a few local anglers from the point pleasant area maybe watch our video fishing forecast and follow our advice towards la piora vida here's more with captain ben from jackpot sport fishing and our local connection in capos Hey there guys, this is Ben Gilmore from Costa Rica. I got the Green family here from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Welcome guys to Marina Pez Bella, Costa Rica. Thanks for having us, Captain Ben. We did great. I mean, we caught three rooster fish, the fish of a lifetime. It was totally amazing. Top-notch captain, top-notch crew. I suggest you get down here at Jackpot Sport Fishing. Absolutely amazing day, guys. We just caught three nice rooster fish, three snappers. The rooster fish bite's been good, the snook bite is good down here at the moment. Further offshore, there's lots and lots of marlin. I caught six, uh, marlin six days out of seven over the last week. The sailfish are moving in, and we got some mahi-mahi and tuna also. Hope to see you guys down here soon this winter. See you later from Costa Rica. 
Don't forget, saltwater anglers in the state of New Jersey, you've got to register to fish. It's free, but you still have to go over there, over there to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. It is the law, but we need to get some better numbers. We need to help these folks in gathering data about how we catch. Of course, you'll also need to get your renewed freshwater fishing license and trout stamp if you want to get out there and try the trout. Of course, same thing in Delaware. You'll need the full license if you're a Delawarean. That entitles you to fresh and salt water. You'll also need your freshwater or your fishing identification number down there in Delaware as well. Same as in Pennsylvania, same as in New York. So make that one of the first things you do this week. Make sure you're all, you got your license, license and registration, please, sir. Uh, a few folks contacted me this week about an issue of parking in the town of Bayhead in Ocean County, which happens to be my home stretch. Uh, the town council recently voted to restrict parking on street ends east of East Avenue from 8 p.m until 6 a.m. Now keep in mind that the current and immediately former parking regulations were 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So it's two hour difference. You can still park in other areas of Bayhead, but I do have a message into the Bayhead Town Council to figure out exactly why that was, but it wasn't a complete shutdown. Currently it is at the street ends, east of East Avenue, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. But I'll tell you this, there's nothing to catch in Bayhead, so you don't want to be there. <laughs> we'll find out more. Hey, listen, if you've got news, updates to share, perhaps an access problem in your local community, uh, you'd like to share about it, maybe you want some further discussion, you've got some questions, you can always reach me via email at jhutchinson at thefisherman.com. Uh, also, make sure you post any comments, carry on the conversations here at our YouTube area. You can add your messages down below and we'll correspond back and forth. You can also, of course, find my email address in the January edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Uh, pick up a complimentary issue this Saturday and Sunday at the Wildwoods Convention Center, the Wildwoods Fishing and Boating Expo. That's Saturday, Sunday, January 7th and 8th. Look for us out there. Get your free package of BKK hooks as well as a package of fish bites with your new and renewing subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. It is show season, we've got a bunch of them. Garden State Outdoor Sportsman Show is next. We're gonna carry you through all the way to the Saltwater Fishing Expo and the Asbury Park Show in March. But we are just getting started. Catch them up this weekend. Maybe I'll see you in Wildwood, otherwise I'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.